Hey, this is the Long Island Housing Market Podcast. I'm Tom McGivern. I'm a licensed real estate broker, equal housing broker, Long Island. Um, it's called Long Island Housing Market, uh, but I'm primarily focused in Suffolk County for these podcasts because I'm located, my office is located in Suffolk County. Um, if you want to reach me, my phone number is 631-831-9048. I'm going to be doing these podcasts. I did one about a week ago. I won't do them as frequently uh, like that in the future, probably like one or two a month. But I came across some data and I wanted to host uh, or do this quick podcast here. Kind of like touch on, you know, what people have been saying in the market re with regard to, you know, it's a buyer's market or it's a seller's market because they hear more people talking about it. So I figured I'd, sh you know, shine some light on that subject um, what I found was I looked at what's in contract and what has sold over the last 60 days now last week I did a podcast and it was focused on the uh, what's available All right, we looked at how the top end of the market is kind of Overweighted. There's a lot of listings for, for sale. So I just said, hey, you know, let me pull what's in the contract and what's closed. So right now, there's 3,285 houses that are in contract. Now, some of this data might be skewed by old listings that have been, you know, under contract or left under contract. Some agents don't close out their deals. So a small portion of these will be houses that have been just left in contract, but that's, uh, very little, so it's pretty accurate. So 3,285 houses that are per currently pending a closing, so they're in contract. Of those, I broke the market down under 300,000, 802 are in contract. Between 300 and 500,000, there's 1,617 houses for sale, uh, excuse me, under contract. 1,617, that's the bulk of what we have in contract. And that represents, you know, the average sale price, you know, for Suffolk County. Between five hundred and seven, seven hundred and fifty thousand, between five hundred thousand and seven hundred fifty thousand, five hundred and fifty-eight houses for, uh, in contract. And then over seven hundred fifty thousand homes with a price tag over seven fifty, three hundred and fourteen in contract. And I thought that number was a little bit low. Uh, so and I'll come back to that. Short sales, there's 248 short sales right now that are in contract. And then there are 249 homes that are real estate owned or their foreclosures, they're bank owned. So that's 500 houses, pretty much. It's just shy of 500 houses that are under contract, short sales and REOs. And that actually is um, out of 3,285 that makes up more than 10%. So that was interesting. Uh, but because people looking for deals, you know, but I focused in on that 314 houses in contract over 750. And I went and pulled up what's available right now as of today, because I remember last week, the uh, the number was high, you know, there was a there was a lot for sale in that in that price range. So houses over 750, 750,000, 1693. So 1693 are for sale currently available and only 314. Now under normal circumstances, you know, the that market 750,000, that's a lot uh of uh of money, you know. So th there will be obviously less of those homes for sale and less of those homes for contract, but that's not the case. There's a lot. 1,750 homes out of 6,000, that makes up a substantial amount of the market that's for sale. So 314 under contract, that's less than 10% of what's in, in contract right now. And if you follow uh, the money, right? The markets follow money. And if people in that range aren't buying there's a reason for that. So the rate of what's available and people that are trying to sell and the rate of homes that are going into contract, 
uh, or you know, being sold is low, much lower than than uh, what's available, and that may have to do with the uh, salt deductions being changed, the state and local tax deductions. People do pl- pay exorbitant taxes. I mean, if you have a home that's you're paying eight grand or ten thousand dollars in taxes, you you might think that that's a lot. Fifteen thousand. You know, there are homes where people in the higher end luxury market. They're paying like sixty thousand bucks for taxes. They're getting rocked, and uh, waterfronts, etc. North Shore, South Shore, uh, the taxes can get ridiculous, and uh, so I think that is something that's happening in that in that market where people are saying, you know, I'm out of here. I'm done paying forty five thousand. Oh, wait a minute, you can't sell your house because people don't want to pay that much money because they're not getting any of the deductions any longer that they used to. So maybe that's having something to do with it. Although my, some will say that the the, the uh, wealthy, wealthier individuals don't really care so much about uh, state and local tax deductions, but at the end of the day, who wants to pay $50,000 for your property taxes? 60,000, that's 12, uh, uh, you know, that's $5,000 a month in just taxes. And that might not be a lot to somebody, but if you can live somewhere else in the Hamptons or uh, in Connecticut, or that might be a bad example because they have high taxes too, but wherever, uh, and only pay $3,000 a year, that's 57 grand. People don't get wealthy or accumulate money you know, by spending it frivolously on things like taxes. So uh, that's something to keep an eye on, and I will keep an eye on that. Um, now I switched over to closings to see what's closed. 2018, between October and November, right now, there's 2,459 houses. Uh, well, 2,459 houses that sold in the in that time frame. It's like between October 1st and or October 2nd to December 2nd, which is how, the date I'm recording this on. December 2nd, 2018. 2,459 houses in two months. I went back a year. 2017. I should have went back to, to 2016, but 2017. 2,626. That's a 6.5%. 6.4% to be exact. Drop in the number of homes that were sold. So the market is, and I didn't break that down in price, but the market definitely is shifting shifting towards a buyer's market now if you're a buyer out there i don't want somebody to hear this and go yeah see i told you so it's a it's a buyer's market because it's not technically a buyer's market yet right now there's only six thousand homes for sale and when you break down certain markets you know like bohemia or Bayport Blue Point or some other towns like that uh, you know there's like 14 listings like available so the markets there can be red hot other markets like Patchog or Medford um, or Huntington um, uh, if you go to the North Shore Miller Place other parts there could be um, more more inventory however overall there's still low inventory in comparison to what we were used to a few years ago um so we want to make sure that when you're listening to this you don't go and say oh it's definitely a buyer's market i can you know make 10 percent or 15 percent uh below ask price offers and expect a result that's not the case we're still in a strong seller's market and if you're a homeowner out there these are things you need to keep track of. If you have a plan to to move and you want to sell and you want to co- kind of coordinate, hey, I'd like to get the most amount of money for the sale of my home. That's important. You want to reach out to us and uh, talk to us now because if you're thinking about selling next year, let's say, or in 2020 in spring, that's fine. But sitting down with somebody who's taking the time to, A, create a podcast B, have you know great website have a team that can can support that person I'm on the Brunelli team we have a great team great real estate agents I'm a great real estate agent I've 
work with a lot of people to sell their homes, I always find it's better to contact or talk with the real estate agent now if you have plans for the future. Because you may sit down and then and say, you know what, let's let's adjust this plan and make maybe make our our sale or our move. We're going to move it up a year rather than away from a for a year. Because I can tell you right now, 2020 is definitely going to be more of a buyer's market, uh, and your prices may be stagnant or maybe declining just a little as we navigate through the next you know two years of the market. Right now, it's still strong. January, February, March, April, May, June of next year, it's going to be very solidly in the seller's corner because all this stuff takes time to slow the market down. Rates being you know still under 5%, which is incredible, is uh, something that every buyer out there needs to be aware of. And if you want to make you know your move to buy a house, you want to do it sooner than later. So we kind of have this perfect balance, I, I'd say. I'd say it's a pretty good balance. It's still a seller's market because the inventory is low. All right, it's catching up, definitely shifting, but by no means is it a buyer's market. It's definitely still a seller's market. We'll keep an eye on this stuff. I will be doing another podcast in another week or two, going over the availables again, and I might combine, I might do this every 60 days. I think that's probably a good thing. So I'll do the in contracts and closed in, let's say, early February. And I'll go over December and January's uh, closings and what's in contract. And we'll keep keep an eye on it. I'm Tom McGivern. Thanks for listening. Uh, head over to my website, uh, TomMcGivern.com. If you're on the site now, great. And um, look me up on Facebook as well. I am there. I have a professional page. I put uh, my new listings there. I put our off-market listings there. On my website, there is a place to uh, sign up to receive our off-market listings. If you're a buyer and you don't want to wait to, you know, to uh, go to a house at the open house and be there with 25 other people and you want a strategy, go to, that, go to my site, get on our list. We'll send you our properties before they hit the MLS. Uh, and before they even list it sometimes. You know, we sit down with the homeowner and they're saying, hey, we'll, we'll list it on MLS in uh, two weeks. Uh, we have that listing. We can still show it to you prior to it going on the MLS. And that's a huge advantage to any buyer out there. So check that out, TomMcGivern.com. All right, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening.